journey. <laughs> Healing is not a what's it done, you know? <laughs> it's a journey, and so he's reminding us. So you do the first thing, and you see what that happens, what happens with that. And then you do the next thing. You see what happens? I mean, I mean you go to a doctor and it's a journey, is it not? You start with one thing and then you go to another and you go deeper, you go to a specialist. You know, it's like, it's a journey. So, of course, it has an effect and it doesn't. It works, yes, and it doesn't. It's not the end all. It's a journey. And that's the spiritual abundance. That's the width of it. It is a call to distance ourselves from the use of chemicals, poisons, and all the complicated ways we have invented that are contrary to nature. So, the other thing is, is that we we have our culture, as well as our choices, as have chosen to put us in a situation that's difficult for us physically. And so with, with GMO, I mean, you, you, you name it, with, with GMOs and the additives and the what have you. And so it's, we can't help it now. And a lot that's still healing. We can, we can find a way to overcome it in simple ways that don't seem like they're, it doesn't seem like this equals health and healing. This little thing, or this four little things, pray over, equals this. Or this Quranic verse will move me to that. So, this is, this is part of the journey of the mind, which is necessary to realize that we're not dealing with this equals this. We're dealing with something different because we're dealing with different layers. We're dealing with what we don't know about. We're dealing with our ignorance, in a sense. We're not just dealing with detoxification. We're not getting rid of poisons. We're, at another level, we're getting rid of the poisons of our soul. Right? We're, it, it's a very wide thing that we're working with. So this is, this is why the corona is important. So, so, then now, now he speaks about sacred healing and its history. Today, alternative medicine has emerged as a respectful field. One recommended remedy in that field is called sound healing. Researchers had proven that the, the cells of the brain vibrate to a certain frequency and that there's a program within each cell which regu regulates the vibration during its lifespan. This programming is affected by outer influences, such as emotional or social trauma. These conditions affect the program inside the cells and result in a variety of disturbances, which may cause physical and psychological illness and may lead to the malfunction of the whole body. Some researchers believe that the easiest way to cure most disease is by reprogramming the disturbed cells. In other words, by bringing the cells back to their natural balance and normal vibration. So when in my own personal work, deep work with what is healing, healing is, it, it feels to me like some part of it is about coming back into balance. What Amani was talking about was about being out of balance. You know, we're, we're, we're focusing on the darkness and here's the brightness. Right? The, the focus is moved. So the balance is to see both. So this coming into balance, and 
TV has spoke about it this morning about about coming or yesterday morning about coming into the balance of of seeing the uh, of seeing the big picture of knowing the big picture in the midst of the small picture. And there's also the balance of the physical body, the emotional body, and the, the soul and the spirit. And so we have, so this, this balancing is important. And so this coming into the cells, for the sound to come into the cells, that rebalances the cells of the brain. And so that's, that, he's saying, is a key piece of it. <clears throat> These conditions affect, this is emotional or social, affect the program inside the cells and result in a variety of disturbances, which may cause physical and psychological illness and may lead to the malfunction of the whole body. Some researchers believe that the easiest way to cure most disease is by reprogramming the diseased cells. In other words, by bringing the cells back to their natural balance and normal vibrations. Scientists have found that harmed cells have a lower vibrational rate than normal cells and have been trying to find correct vibrational signals to adjust the cell's vibration <laughs> To its normal set, to its normal rate. So it's like there's a part of us that is looking for the perfect role model, right? Oh, there's the role model. Now I want to be like that. You know, and so our each cell is looking for that role model, and so the Quran is giving us that balancing role model, if you will. It's giving us that signal. Oh, there it is. I missed it. Right? So it's giving us that answer. There are scientists in the West who rely on healing through music, through its natural sounds and constant signals. The noble Quran and known supplications have added to this knowledge. As we know, sound is vibration which arrives at the ear. It transfers the signals to the brain and affects the cell's vibration. When a person listens to the Quran, its vibration positively affects the vibration of his cells, which adjusts them to the normal rate which Allah created them with. This is because the Quran is distinguished with a unique harmonious rhythm that does not exist in other speech. So this is important. This, I think, is, is some part of the key. Because if you see a, um, a, a voice or, or a musical, help me, what's the word? Waves. Wave. Side Wave. Right. Side wave. Side. You know, and if you're watching it, mm -hmm. it's it has a particular rhythm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put a Quran reciter through that that that, that um, frequency, frequency it, you will see that it is quite different. Mm -hmm. In because realize that each of the letters of the Quran has a particular angel that is delivering it, and each of the letters there's numbers of letters in each word. And so each word is bringing to us our body, soul, and spirit is bringing to us a signal which is much more complex than a regular voice, than a regular tone. It is an angelically programmed, if you will, um, frequency. And so it's special. It's very special. And this is the, this is what then is happening for us. Is that we're receiving this, this very wide range of frequency which can do marvelous things. 
which other things can't. You know, the, at the beginning, when, when uh, if any of you have studied the stations, um, there are stations at the beginning of the path when it says, don't listen to music. Do not listen to music. Why? Because you don't know where the music is coming from. You don't have the discernment to know whether this is from the shaitan or whether this is from the purity. And so until you learn that, you need to, you need to separate yourself from that so that you can learn to discern. And so the Quran gives us these full frequency, body, soul, spirit, kinds of um, messages to bring us back into balance. Aisha? Yes. Um, I don't know if you're able to answer this, but do you know how the, the Quran differs from like the Zohar and um, Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic teachings? And then also like the, the other sacred languages, Sanskrit, Hebrew, Arabic, I do not. and I do and not know that. It sounds like a, it's a wonderful <laughs> if you call to it. It's a, you know it, it's a wonderful thing to research. I don't know because this you know this this book came into my possession a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> It's just hot off the press, and and it's like there's a there's there's deep recognition in my heart of what it's saying, but there's not recognition about other kinds of research. Did you happen to read in the book in the Kabbalist teachings? If I'm saying that right, my understanding is that um, the Shaitan cannot understand Aramaic, but Arabic is different than Aramaic. Did you happen to see that in your reading? No, I haven't. Like, Except like I do, I do know that the, 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 the you know the sacred languages. I've studied about the sacred languages in the past, and I'm sure that Allah has put in in different kinds of messages, yes. just like He had different messenger, messengers with the same message, but in different words in different ways, you know, so that it's it's all one and it isn't one. Yeah. You know, one of those. But so the main the main gist of, of the Quran is that it's really it's it's healing and for the yes. mind, body, soul and spirit. That's right. the main the main main gist because it's bringing the vibration. And of course we understand that vibration is what the angels are delivering. You know, I mean, it's quite amazing that the, that every drop of water, every drop of water that falls from the sky has an angel accompanying it. Every drop. So it's the angel is accompanying it so that that drop of water goes where Allah wants it to go to. So if every drop of water is that way, what about every every word in the Quran? It's going where Allah is sending. Oh, how good! It's quite miraculous. Aisha, can I can I add something here too? That um, remember back about five ten years ago, they were talking about Mozart and Bach and how good it is for infants mm -hmm. under the age of two to listen. I know someone who did their thesis that if you like, I think you're saying that the sound waves, like if you what they were pointing at, this is very good for brain development, that the Quran is like way higher in all the exact same places. Right. So anyone with children, grandchildren, make sure you have the Quran all the time for them to hear. All the time for them to hear. Yeah. Hopefully well. So let's take a look at the illnesses that the Quran heals. Okay. Are you sure? <laughs> I just to uh, add something to the question here. CG always say that the Quran itself says that it, it is the last message. So it contains the Torah. The Quran says, and CG also said in the teaching, that the Quran contains all the previous messages. 
uh, it contains the Torah and the Gospel and uh, it mentions prophets that we don't know. The, it says there are prophets that we didn't even know that are mentioned in the Quran, other than the ones mentioned. So since it is the last message, it is not, it, it contains them all. It's the accumulation that is moving humanity towards that last awakening phase, if you will. <laughs> Yes. It has all the vibrations. If we talk the language of vibrations, it is the wave carrier that carries the other waves. Yes, and not to say that it is the best. There's this fine line between saying it contains it all and saying, therefore, that is the dust. Don't go to the therefore. <laughs> The Torah, the, the other beautiful things are perfect in the way they're used. We happen to be Muslims, and so we will use the Quran, I would imagine. I believe the Hebrew letters also have an angel on the left and the right. Yeah. We love, so just don't, don't make separation, that's all. 124,000, that's a lot of I, I totally agree with what I'm saying, you know, but don't take the oh. Don't take the next step. <laughs> five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Yeah. Okay. Because we have Sadie coming in, in 20 minutes. Back okay. Yeah. So, then. So basically, <laughs> it will heal all the, all the illnesses. I got to get the other one. I got to get the other one. Boy, my blood to make it So. But this is important because there is a way to do it. And there's a way that is the best for you to do it. And so that's what's up on and that that's why I'm on hand up. Oh wait, I'm sorry. You have you have till five forty five, I'm sorry. You have fifteen more minutes, six <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I just totally missed you. <laughs> <laughs> the abundance, the abundance of the minutes. There we go, the abundance. Okay. So, so how do we recite the so how are we going to recite the Quran? So first of all, there are excuse me. So we're going to be reciting the <laughs> We're going to be reciting the Quran um, it, with our own voice. Your own voice is your most powerful healer. Your own voice is the most powerful self-healer. It's a self-healer, but it's the best healer, but it's the best, it's the best healer. So you're, so you're going to recite it to yourself. Uh, and, uh, out loud? Out loud, yes. So it needs to be out loud. Now it needs to be in several, several ways. There's a, there's a hadith, or I'm sorry, a, a uh, so it says, uh, yes, it's in the Quran. Beautify the Quran with your voices. And another one, in another hadith says, He who does not cantillate the Quran beautifully is not one of us. And also praise at its wonders and move hearts by it. So we need to, we need to recite the Quran slowly. We need to recite the Quran beautifully. We need to recite the Quran evenly. In other words, not fast, but slow and fast and slow, so we don't have a particular rhythm. And so it's melodious, even, beautiful in our own voice. So this is the way to, to bring the message of the angel that the, that the angels are, are bringing to each of the cells, to our being, to ourselves. 
and then and it needs to be in an audible tone. So let's say your spouse is having difficulty and is not able to speak or there's some reason why or your child can't do it. You need to do the Quran audibly. So they need to be able to hear it. So this is through hearing. So it's not that you're that you're mumbling it or that you're saying it silently. It's you're doing it audibly, you're doing it slowly, you're doing it melodiously, and you're doing it um, uh, rhythmically. Even even rhythm. In even rhythm. Aisha? So is yes. that is that in Arabic or English or whatever language? It's in it's Arabic in? because the Arabic carries the angels. English is not an angelic language. But in Sheikh Turkey's. Uh, so I will get there. Oh, Just sorry. a minute, please. So please, I only have 15 minutes. <laughs> So the, the, the timing of it, so it could be any time, but it needs, um, it's best that you can be standing, sitting, in any position. So the timing is not so important. And you can also be asleep. So the person or you can be asleep. Of course, you're not doing it in your, with your own voice if you're asleep. <laughs> or you're recording it and listening to it while you're asleep. So you can be awake, you can be asleep. But because you're, you're, your brain is still hearing it. Alhamdulillah. Um, so, so remember, this says that it's best in your when you're trying to heal something, it's best in your own voice. So what I have on the handout is several websites where you can be learning the source. And these are all easy source. I'm going to go over this, which source in a moment. It's like um, one of them is the Fatiha. So if you don't know the Fatiha. You go to the website and you learn it through singing along with the, the recitation. So it's the way to learn the melodious, the even, you know, the even keel. It's the way to learn what's good for you and the way to cantillate appropriately. And then as you do it over and over, you learn it so you can do it on your own. So it's the way to read. Once you know, read the transliteration and to hear it and to, to see it and to replicate it so that your body hears your voice as well as the other voice. So there's also a supplementary healing, and that is to listen to the sores cantillated by someone else during the day. So listening to the Quran at any time is also a supplementary healing for you. So if you're dealing with something serious, it's like do is listen to as much Quran as you can. So the surahs that, that 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 is being said that are good for the general healing are we you repeat them seven times. So we're not saying the Fatiha once. We're saying the Fatiha seven times. Surah Bakarah, I have to curse you. We're not doing it once, we're doing it seven times. Surah Ikhlas, we're doing it seven times. Surah Falak and Surah Nas, we're doing seven times. These are surahs that many people already know. So it may be in your um, 
repertoire. Thank you. So you're reciting these to yourself in an audible, slow, melodious voice, and doing it seven times. She recommends that you do it seven times in the morning and seven times before you go to bed for healing, specifically for healing. So you're healing something. And you set your intention, and then you do these seven times. 